Most of the films I make are, are, be, uh, are cast in one or two countries, but for The Promise we cast our net a little wider. Um, obviously all the British characters, the British soldiers, Erin and her friend, who are the lead characters in the present day story, we cast here in the UK. Uh, we also had um, a casting director and a significant casting effort in Israel itself, some cast in Jewish areas in Tel Aviv and the like, and also we did some specific casting in Haifa for some of the Arab parts. But we also cast in Berlin and in Paris and in fact in Los Angeles. The part of Len took us the longest to cast and I think I saw more people for Len than any other character. I was talking to Marcia Gresham who was casting the film and I said, you know, what do you think about Christian for Len? And uh, she thought it was worth a try. I don't think she was as sort of intrigued by the idea as I was, if I'm being really honest. Um, and then it was quite difficult to get you in, wasn't it? Because we were busy and yeah. I came out here and then you were doing yeah, other things. Right, yeah. And I knew, it, I knew it the moment he walked in the door. It was before he even opened his mouth. And I think I commented to you at the time, the interesting thing was, he came into the room as a completely different person. When he came into audition for Jackie, he was quite cocky. And I had in mind your performance, you know, in yeah. Trinity. Oh, right, it was yeah. obviously a completely different performance, but it was a very sort of strong, confident character. And then this kind of quite subdued, sort of James Dean type guy came in the room. And I thought, I, I had it like, <laughs> this goosebumps. And at the moment he started, it was obvious. I'd watched Claire Foy uh, play the lead in the wonderful uh, BBC drama serial Little Dorrit. And I was very struck by the performance of, of a young actress who I personally had never seen before. The role of Little Dorrit was a long, long way from that of Erin Matthews in The Promise, but it was clear enough that she was a wonderful actress and that was enough for us to call her in and give her a try. And really, from the first moment she opened her mouth, it was clear that we had found our Erin. Why are you just standing there doing nothing? What's the point of you even being here if you don't try and stop them? The part of Muhammad is the most important Arab character uh, in the 1940s part of the drama. The promise of the title revolves around an undertaking that is given to him by Len. So finding the right actor to play Muhammad was absolutely crucial. I was already aware of the work of Ali Suleiman from a number of wonderful and successful feature films. I was lucky enough to be able to audition him on my first casting visit to Israel. He was absolutely fantastic and uh, we knew we'd found our Muhammad. I had written a part, um, the part itself went through a number of names, it, he ended up being known as Omar. Uh, he was supposed to be gorgeous, young, sexy, charismatic, the person who Erin falls in love with. He was a former um, fighter, a former member of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs, which is the military, one of the military wings of Fatah, who had now given up violence and had joined an organisation called Combatants for Peace, where fighters from both sides of the uh, dispute unite to try to argue for peace. And he needed to be believable as a friend of Paul, Eliza's brother, and the main contemporary male Jewish character in our film. I saw a film called The Visitor, an American film about a, an American who finds uh, Arabs squatting in his flat in New York. And Haz Sleeman, who was playing the main male lead in that film, gave such an amazing, gentle, sensitive, subtle performance. I spoke to Haz and he was very committed to the project right from the start and he himself cleared away a number of obstacles to make sure that he was able to join us in Israel and play the part of Omar. It was important to me in casting the young men to play Len's section, the, the corporals and um, private soldiers who, who answer to Sergeant 
Len Matthews, that they bonded, that there was a camaraderie between them. So having cast them, I then sent them off to boot camp. Paul Hornsby, our military advisor, is a very experienced ex-soldier and has been a military advisor on a number of films, arranged a military-style boot camp for the guys for about a week. And as I understand it, it was pretty tough. But as a result, they arrived on set knowing each other, having lived together, having worked together on the course, having supported each other through difficult exercises, kidded around, in fact very similar to the way a group of soldiers arriving in Palestine might be if they'd served together in the Second World War. I'd written the part of Paul, uh, Eliza's older brother, a man who'd already served in the Israeli army and had been quite affected and damaged by the experience. He was a quiet, thoughtful, very political man, very left-wing, and he becomes a very telling influence on Erin as she journeys around modern-day Israel. I was lucky enough to be able to secure the services of the wonderful Itai Tiran, probably the leading young male actor in Israel today, whose main claim to fame is that he's been playing Hamlet there for many years. I was lucky enough not only to, to, to have him agree to play Paul, but also, I think, to, to become friends with him. I admire him, I learnt a lot from him. He helped me understand the character that I'd written and we made some adjustments based on the things he suggested. Also, it turned out that Itai is an extremely accomplished pianist, so we were able to incorporate a sequence into the film where Paul, his character, is playing the piano late at night. Ben Miles is an actor I've worked with on two previous occasions. He's a wonderful actor. He does very little and yet you immediately warm to him as a character. Uh, you read in the gaps between the words, which is of course in film what one always is looking for. And he was the perfect person to play Eliza's warm, affectionate, intelligent, resourceful father, Max. It was quite difficult to cast Leia, the, the uh, part of Eliza's mother, and we sought to cast her in three or four different locations. Eventually, I was lucky enough to meet Smada Wolfman, who is Israeli but is living now in Paris. She was introduced to me by another casting director, and I travelled to Paris to audition her, and she gave the most wonderful performance. I think for her it was quite a treat to return to her homeland for a few months to help us shoot The Promise. Clara and Zephora were written as characters newly arrived in Palestine as refugees in the 1940s. Both were from Berlin, and therefore it made sense to cast German actresses in the role, since these characters would undoubtedly speak English, if they spoke it at all, with a strong German accent. I identified two fabulous actors, Katharina Schuttler, to play the main role of Clara, Len's girlfriend who has a complicated journey ending in a, in a very unusual outcome. For the part of her beautiful, boisterous, outgoing friend Zephora, we cast Ivona Katterfeld, who's actually better known in Germany as a rock star, but is a wonderful actress. Together these two young German actors came out to Israel uh, and helped us uh, achieve the authenticity that I was looking for. I think the toughest acting challenge, and you might say the most perverse decision I made, was to cast the legendary Palestinian actress Hiam Abbas, a veteran of a number of stunning performances in movies, 
who is a woman in her mid-forties and young and very beautiful, as the 85-year-old, ancient, almost immobile, vastly overweight Jowda. For him to play this role, she had to wear a full head and upper torso prosthetic. This meant that she spent three and a half hours in makeup every day, and in the 95 degree heat of Israel and an Israeli late spring, early summer, to wear this silicon gel and rubber for hours on end. We needed to have fans brought in so we could keep her cool between takes. But she gives the most wonderful and moving performance, though I challenge anybody who is a fan of Hyama Bass's work to recognize her. The only thing you can see in her face that is actually hers is her eyeballs. Thank you. 